Hello everyone. Uh, today I am going to present a project I conducted as part of my PhD visit to the lab of uh, Mirka Zago and Francesco Lacquaniti in Rome. Um, this uh, project was recently published with me as one of the first authors, the other being Barbara Rascalea. Uh, in this project we looked at whether the duration of Earth gravity conformant parabolic motion was easier to judge than motion that did not obey Earth gravity. The motivation behind this project was from uh, a paper from 2011, where people from the same lab in Rome, Alessandro Moscatelli, and one of the authors of our study, Francesco Lacquaniti, showed participants linear motion in 2D, um, embedded in this um, little pictorial background here on the right. The, that motion was either congruent with Earth, Earth, Earth gravity, um, so the ball here was falling uh, downwards with an acceleration of 9.81 meters per square second, or it could fall up with the same uh, acceleration. Uh, the participants were then asked to judge the duration of this motion, and um, it was found that the, duration, that the duration was judged more precisely when the motion obeyed Earth gravity than when it didn't. The rationale behind this whole idea is, uh, well, basically putting two ideas together. Um, first, when we estimate the duration of a trajectory, we take immediate sensor sensory information and combine it with predictions that we make about the total duration of the motion while we're observing it, so throughout the whole uh, motion. Um, Second idea is, well, we know that we use an internalized representation of Earth gravity for all sorts of predictions. For example, if we have to uh, catch balls to predict where and when this ball is going to drop and at what time we have to open our hand and initiate, initiate the, the catching movement, and, and etc. Um, so when we use these predictions, um, we are much more precise and also very accurate in our responses. And then the idea is that if we can use this internal model of Earth gravity to make more precise predictions um, throughout the trajectory of this ball, then we can, can combine the immediate sensory information about the duration um, with these more precise predictions. Um, and then the overall estimate should be more precise as well. So the basic idea, idea was already there in this 2011 paper, um, but when I went to Rome to do my little exchange, um, I thought we should try and replicate this result with a more ecologically valid stimulus. So we took the idea and translated it into a VR environment, and instead of linear motion, we used parabolic motion. So to get everyone on the same page, um, again, our hypothesis was that precision should be higher when motion is earth gravity uh, conformant or concordant um, than for control motions that do not obey uh, earth gravity. So um, about our experiment, uh, about the methods, we immerse participants in a uh, VR mini cave environment that you can see here on the right. Um, we showed them two motion intervals where uh, balls were approaching them frontally on parabolic trajectories. Um, and our participants had to tell us which of these two motions took longer. So yeah, just a pretty standard uh, two alternative force choice uh, task here. We used seven test trajectories that had durations between 0 0.7 and 1.3 seconds and one out of three motion profiles um, that were, one was Earth gravity, um, one was a motion profile where we kept the tangential velocity constant, um, and one where we kept the vertical velocity constant. I will uh, show that a bit better in the next slide. Um, the comparison parabola um, was always governed by Earth gravity, and it was always one second long. Um, you can see these parabolas here in the pictures, yeah, here in the picture. Um, the longest parabola in time was uh, also the longest parabola in space. Uh, so we were a bit concerned that our participants would just ignore the task that we gave them about durations and use the initial position of the ball to make these judgments. 
So um, we couldn't avoid that because with parabolas, there's always moving parts. And if you change one thing, if you match one thing, there is some other thing that you can't match. Um, so instead of controlling for it and matching it, we added two control parabolas that were uh, always one second long. But we um, matched the initial and vertical, uh, the initial vertical and horizontal speeds such that one started uh, behind the comparison, like the regular one second parabola and one in front. So uh, if people really sh if people really only used um, the distance to make these judgment, then we would see that by comparing the two uh, distance control parabolas to uh, the comparison one. Now about the results in a good old science fashion, the data did not confirm our hypothesis. Um, we have here uh, the mean um, J and D's uh, on the left and the mean PSE's on the right. Um, and here, well, on the, on the far right, we have a depiction of how the sort of the average psychometric function would lo look like for each of the conditions. Um, as you can see, there is no differences uh, for the PSEs, and we didn't expect that either. It's just here for, for completeness sake, basically. Um, and yeah, like no surprise there. What did surprise us um, was that we found that the JNDs, um, where we had, just to remind you, but we had predicted that Earth gravity would elicit the lowest values corresponding to the highest precision. Here, we actually found that the parabolas with the, with the, the constant tangential velocity elicited lower J and Ds um, than both the gravitational parabolas and the ones with constant uh, vertical velocity. Um, I unfortunately don't have a, a plot for the control conditions, but we um, we did analyze the data for that as well, and we found evidence that people were also using the distance to, dis to decide between the two parabolas, but they didn't decide solely based off the the initial distance, based on the the initial distance. Also, a little surprise there. Humans usually just use, I guess, most of the time, just use all the information they can they can get to uh, to do a task. To sum everything up, we did not find what we expected and the duration of gravity conformant motion was not judged more precisely than non-gravitational motion. Uh, instead, we found that precision was the highest when the tangential speed of the parabola was kept constant. We have some tentative explanations for it. Um, so for one, we, um, we didn't simulate, simulate air drag and maybe participants were expecting air drag to, to act upon the ball. Uh, we did some like uh, maths and plots and stuff and it, uh, it seems that when the ball um, is very light or was, uh, was expected to or thought to be very light, um, with a little air drag you might get something that is more similar to the tangential velocity um, trajectories than the, the gravity ones. Um, but mm, the, the participants would have would have expected uh, would have needed to expect um, the the ball to be very light. So I'm a bit skeptical about that explanation. Um, another possible explanation that I like a bit better um, was that um, to make predictions about the duration of uh, the parabola of the motion. Um, the tangential velocity needs to be kind of extracted from the stimulus. In the case of gravitational motion, as we've seen in the motion profiles, this tangential uh, velocity um, changes over the over the course of the of the trajectory. So, to make good predictions, it would have to be updated continuously. Um, and on the other hand, so that might make it more difficult. And of course, on the other hand, for the constant tangential velocity one, um, the visual system would need to recover it once, um, and could then um, and could then kind of uh, use the same value um, over the course of the whole trajectory to make a, this prediction more easily and more maybe more more precisely. Um, yeah, I don't hate the second explanation, but there might be some, I don't know, it, it does feel like there might be some more to it. 
Um, and I guess somebody should find out. Maybe, maybe us, maybe, maybe not us. I don't know. With that, I want to thank you for listening. Um, and thanks also to all of my collaborators, my first author, my, my co first author, Barbara Lascaleya, uh, Juan Lopez Moliner, Francesco Lacuaniti, and Mirka Zago. <laughs>